Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It is the 3rd of October. Man, I'll tell you, summer really went by fast. I really hope you're having a great fall. In this uh, week's video, I'm off on a little bikepacking trip. And I'm heading from Star Valley, Wyoming over into Idaho. It's going to be about half pavement and half forest surface roads. Weather conditions is it's reasonably mild for this time of year. Highs are in the 70s. Lows are going to be well below freezing. This will be fun. So come along. Well, this is going to be just an overnight trip. Reasonably short, somewhere around 70 miles. I've got a fairly late start in the day. And the main reason I'm getting such a late start is we have such beautiful fall colors right now. And I'm hoping to shoot some video, take a few photos, and they definitely turn out better in the evening and the early morning. So that's why this is an overnight trip instead of just a blasting it through in one big ride. On this bikepacking trip, I'm taking the Cannondale Tesoro Neo. It's an electric bike, a class three bike. It has a 600 plus watt hour battery. And uh, it should have plenty of range for this trip. There's gonna be quite a bit of climb, maybe 4,000 plus. That'll take a toll on the range. Right now I'm biking in the eco mode and it's showing the range is 90 miles. If that's true, I should be able to e-bike it pretty much the, the whole distance. Although there's going to be a, a lot of climbing coming back. So my strategy for this ride is I'm going to ride it in the eco mode as much as I feel comfortable for for the first half of this ride and then we'll see where the battery is. And if I can use go up and boost for the last half of the ride, we'll certainly do that. And if I time it just right, <laughs> maybe the last five or 10 miles of highway, we can use a lot of electric assist. But for now, we're just going to uh, cruise along and see how well we do. If you watch my biking videos on this channel, you'll know that last year I went on a pretty long distance bikepacking trip, a ride around the rock as it's called. And I'll put a link down below. On that trip, I rode my electric bike, but I wanted to see if I could ride the whole distance without using the electric assist. So if you're curious about what a crazy old man does for fun, I'll put a link down below for that. And we're currently 11.8 miles into the trip, and I've been watching this battery indicator pretty closely and uh, when this, we lose this uh, last bar, it'll drop down to 80%. We'll stop and we'll do a calculation. Right now it says we still have 73 miles of range. That seems to vary an awful lot, just depending on whether you're going uphill or downhill. But uh, when that bar drops down one bar, it'll be the battery will have 80% left in the pack. And we'll do a calculation. Well, we've made our first major turn and now we're going to do a little bit of climbing. It's one of my pet peeves with a Bosch Piron system, at least with this vintage of bike, is I wish they would really give you a, a battery level and percentage. Because like right now, you know, as it 90%, 100%, 80%, anyway, we're getting probably pretty close to the 80% mark. As soon as it drops down one bar, we'll stop and run the numbers. Well, here's a good place to stop. The uh, battery indicator has dropped down one bar, which means we've used a one fifth of the battery power. You'll see my Garmin shows we've gone 17.8 miles. 
When you look at the display here though, you'll see that the range is currently predicted at only 24 miles. And the reason there's that prediction is because we've been climbing for the last half hour or so. Quite a climb too. Well, I think that's the top of this grade. And as they say, what goes up must come down. Well, that's got to be one of the nicest and longest downhill runs I've done this year. <laughs> that was really a blast. We just finished up the gravel portion of this trip, and now we're back to pavement. But we have about a half hour before it's going to get dark, so we need to find ourselves a place to camp. I think this rainbow is an omen, and I know we can find a good spot down by the river just below the dam. Yep, here's a great spot just up ahead. That was a great ride today. The bike performed really well. Good scenery. No complaints at all. Now we're down on the Snake River Plain. You can actually probably hear the highway, which is on the other side of the river over there. I've got plenty of battery left, and we're going to probably start out in the tour mode tomorrow. And uh, we may even pull up in the sport mode and see if we can get that speed up a little bit. I was plodding along today at a fairly low speed and I rode the whole day in eco mode until right towards the very end when I was starting to get tired. I did put it in the tour mode for a little bit, but uh, great ride today. Not as great as a hot meal, but it'll do the trick. Well, good morning, everybody. This was my home for the night. It was a cool one. Just about at the range of my sleeping bag, so it wasn't the most comfortable night. But now that the sun's come up this morning, it should make for a beautiful day. So we're all packed up and ready to go. We're gonna start out this morning with three bars of battery and I have it in the tour mode and in the tour mode it says I have 30 miles of range well right up here this is the end of our secondary roads and forest service roads and we hit essentially the uh, US 26, which is the road between Idaho Falls and uh, Alpine Junction. And this is a busy road.
this is the Palisades Dam and for the next 20 miles or so we're going to be biking along the Palisades Reservoir. So this is Alpine Junction. If you hang a left here, you go up to Jackson Hole. You keep going straight, you head down to Afton, Wyoming. Well, the town of Alpine, his uh, elevation is 5,700 feet. And my house is at uh, 6,200 feet. I still probably have eight or nine miles to go yet. <laughs> so based on this, it looks like the last little bit I'm going to have to be using my own power. So I've never ridden an e-bike until it runs out of juice. I guess we're going to find out what that's like today. I was a little bit surprised by the amount of battery consumption today compared to yesterday. I decided to put it in the tour mode this morning and ride it for a while. Give my legs a little break, I thought for sure, but boy, it really, really burned up the juice. A lot of hills and also a pretty strong headwind. But we've been cruising on Eco for quite a while. Oh no, <laughs> down to one mile left in the battery. Got a, a big hill and probably five miles left to go. I don't, uh, looks like, looks like I'm gonna find out what it's like to ride this bike without e-assist. <laughs> Wish me luck. Well, that went from one mile range down to zero pretty darn quick. I don't know how long I'll be able to, I still have assist. We'll see what happens when it finally runs out, maybe just shuts off. I don't have a clue. Well, now I know what it feels like when your bike run, it's out of battery. You can just be tooling along and uh, then all of a sudden the assist just goes away. I'll just pedal it along slowly under my own power. These Bosch systems, they're really, really pretty efficient other than just the extra weight of of course the bike which is very heavy and the battery and then of course the bike packing gear but as far as rolling resistance and drag from the motor there isn't much so in this case you're just gonna have to slow down and and pedal it like you're pedaling a heavy old bike well that really was a fun overnight bike packing trip and uh, if you want to know how far I was able to ride on the battery pack, according to the odometer on the bike itself, it looks like it was about 62 or 63 miles. At any rate, I hope you've enjoyed this trip. If you have, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And until next time, be safe, be kind, and pray for peace. <laughs>